and etymology is the origin of words and the way in which the meanings have changed throughout history. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the etymologies and sources from names throughout Azeroth and beyond. We've chosen 10 names from WoW in alphabetical order, so let's get ready to explore the history and meaning of each word. Our first word is Anduin. Anduin is the central character in WoW, having previously been the Prince of Stormwind and now the King, although he appears to be taking a break after the events of Shadowlands. In the game, Anduin is named after the famous hero, Anduin Lothar. In reality, the name Anduin was likely lifted directly from Lord of the Rings. That's not to accuse Metzen of being unoriginal, since it is nearly impossible to avoid such a monolithic influence on all the fantasy genre, and it makes sense as a fitting tribute, since so much of WoW has been influenced by Lord of the Rings. But that's an entirely different video. In Middle-earth, the continent Lord of the Rings takes place on, one of the biggest and largest rivers is named Anduin. The main characters even take canoes down the river for a while, as Frodo goes on his journey to destroy the One Ring in Mount Doom and defeat Sauron. While this is a vast oversimplification, it is important to know that many, many places and characters in WoW have been directly influenced by Lord of the Rings, and that you'll see a lot of Lord of the Rings come up in several other different names in this video. Tolkien invented numerous languages for his epic fantasy world. One of them is Sindarian, which was one of the languages of the elves. Anduin is Sindarian for Great River, but it literally translates as a long river. Naming a character in WoW after River is a bit odd, so let's delve a little deeper into how this influences Anduin the character. Well, if we look at the name thematically, we can draw several conclusions. The biggest realization is that Anduin is a key character in the Warcraft narrative, just as the Anduin River is a key feature of the geography of Middle-earth. Thus, Anduin the character can be seen as the main plot and, quite literally, a big part of the flow of the story. Just as the Anduin River goes through many different kingdoms, lands, and geography, so does Anduin the king. Both are major influences upon things that surround them and shape the landscape of both the land and story. And wow, Anduin has helped other characters develop, whether directly or indirectly. Some of these characters include his father, Varian, of course, Bolvar, Velen, Gen, and most recently, Sylvanas. Another key feature along the Anduin River is two large sculptures of some of the early kings of Gondor, named the Argonath. The Anduin River itself flows near the capital city of the Kingdom of Gondor in the city of Minas Tirith where the throne of the king is. This further ties the connotations of both Anduins to one of regality and kingliness. Just as the Anduin River grows ever larger and stronger as it flows south, so too does Anduin grow stronger as a character and as a person in WoW as the meta story unfolds. There's a lot more to discuss here and we've only just touched the surface, but this is a video, not a literature class, so let's move on to some other words. Our second word is Argus. In World of Warcraft, Argus was the planet and original home of the Drenai until it was taken over by Sargeras and his Burning Legion. Players visited Argus and Legion during Patch 7.3, appropriately named Shadows of Argus. There are three reasons behind the name of this planet, all of which trace their origins from ancient Greece. Argus probably takes its name from Greek mythology, in which Argus was a giant with 100 eyes. This ties thematically to the Burning Legion, as the Legion and Sargeras are always on the lookout to capture and enslave more worlds. Kil'jaeden especially was always on vigil for getting back at Velen, in addition, Sargeras himself was enamored with Azeroth's world soul, and was constantly on the lookout trying to find a way to invade and capture the planet. The notion of an infinite army which can see all directions also makes sense when compared to Argus's hundred eyes, as the Burning Legion, quite literally, had eyes almost everywhere in the universe. Argus was also by some accounts the shipwright of the vessel Argos, which bore a slightly altered version of her name. Argos was the ship that Jason and the Argonauts set sail on to capture the Golden Fleece. Both Arguses, in this sense, can be seen as symbols of exploration and adventure into the unknown. The Burning Legion was always searching for new worlds and places in the Twisted Nether, and Argus was its command post, just as Argus the Sailor was the center of the expedition while Jason and the Argonauts were on their epic quests. Finally, Argos is an ancient city in Greece, and one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. This fits neatly into the idea of the Eridar being a very old and sage race of people. The third word on this list today is Azeroth. Azeroth is the main world most of Warcraft takes place in, and is, for all intents and purposes, the actual world of Warcraft. The most prominent work of fiction the name Azeroth appears in is from the 1979 science fiction novel called Fires of Azeroth by C.J. Cherry. This novel also involves portals between worlds, a corrupted person opening a portal to allow an invasion of a world to happen, and various political factions squabbling amongst themselves uniting against a larger existential threat. As such, it seems to have been a large influence on WoW's lore and story, but we can really only speculate based on what little information we have. In fact, there's even an achievement that shares the same name. The Fires of Azeroth achievement is awarded when players pay their respects at their faction's bonfires during the Burning Blossom Festival across the Cataclysm, Eastern Kingdoms, Kalimdor, Northrend, Outland, and Pandera zones. A very similar word named Azeroth is also the name of a minor goddess from C.S. Lewis's Hepatology, The Chronicles of Narnia. This goddess is briefly mentioned in the book The Horse and His Boy, 
and is described as being a god of the Kalerman Empire and part of the religion. Azaroth might be inspired by a Phoenician goddess known as Astarte, which in turn is probably a variant of the older Mesopotamian Ishtar. Azaroth's worship likely competed with early Judaism and is the origin of several Abrahamic demons like Astareth. The next name is Azara. And wow, Azar is the queen of the Naga and used to be the queen of the Highborn. She and the Night Elves were turned into Naga by the old god Nazoth shortly after the Sundering. While there is no literal transcription of her name, three deities in particular from ancient Middle East and South Asia do resemble some of the aspects of Azara. First, Azara's name bears a striking similarity to the real world goddess named Asherah. Asherah was an ancient Semitic goddess that also appeared in the Sumar and Canaanite religions. In almost all of her iterations, she is one of the highest ranking gods and is the consort of the chief deity. This means she is roughly comparable to Hera of the Greek mythology. Second, another goddess which might also have an influence on Azara's name is Ishara. Although this goddess is probably closer related to Ishtar, another ancient Sumerian goddess. However, she also shares similar traits with Azara in that she is a powerful female associated with beauty and adoration. The final deity is technically a semi-deity named Asvatara from Hinduism and Buddhism. Asvatara is a Naga king in most traditions, and the Nagas of World of Warcraft take their name from the semi-divine Naga serpent people of South Asian mythologies. This link is further reinforced by the fact that there are several Azara statues found throughout Azeroth, all of which look similar to statues of South Asian religions, which have multiple arms that are in circles around the deity. Now let's move on and talk about an old god. We've chosen Cthulhu for our first old god name, since it was the first old god introduced in World of Warcraft, all the way back in vanilla. Most old gods are heavily inspired by some of the elder horrors created by H.P. Lovecraft, and the name Cthulhu is no exception to this pattern. Cthulhu is likely an adaptation of the name Cthulhu. In Lovecraft mythos, Cthulhu is an eldritch being who lies in a death-like slumber beneath the Pacific Ocean in his sunken city of Relay. Both the names of Cthulhu and Cthulhu seem to be inspired by the Greek word for Cthonic. In Greek, Cthonic is a descriptive word for things related to the underworld, and can be used in the context of Cthonic gods, Cthonic rituals, Cthonic cults, and more. The idea of an evil subterranean god or being is very old, and can be traced back going thousands of years to Proto-Indo-European mythologies. Cthulhu's large eye is also somewhat reminiscent of the Eye of Sauron from The Lord of the Rings. The player even loots an item called the Eye of Cthulhu the first time they kill the old god. Several other comparisons to Lord of the Rings should be mentioned, such as how the ancient men in Middle-earth erected towers to watch over Mordor should Sauron ever return, and how these defenses eventually failed. This can be seen as similar to the old gods breaking free of their prisons in WoW after the Titan Keepers had jailed them for so long. Additionally, both Cthulhu and Eye of Sauron are located in hard-to-get-to inhospitable deserts. The next word we'll be exploring is Draenor. In WoW's in-game lore, the word Draenor means Exile's Refuge in the Draenei language. The word Draenei itself means Exiled Ones in Draenei. This refers to Draenei led by Velen who left Argus after the Burning Legion invaded. The word Dran itself means Exile in Draenei. As far as entomology from World War languages go, in the two Celtic languages of Breton and Welsh, the word Dran means Thorn. The Draenei and Velen certainly were a thorn in the side for killed Jaden, Sargeras, and the Burning Legion. Additionally, the word thorn can be used more figuratively to mean a snag, hitch, or problem. There's not much else to say about the word Draenor, so here are two fun facts. First, if you ever wondered if the word Draenor or Draenei came first, it was Draenei. Second, the direct translation of Draenor as Exile's Refuge is quite similar to the starting zone added in Battle for Azeroth, which is called Exile's Reach. Whether these names are made similar intentionally or not is not known. Our next word is Kalimdor, which in game currently refers to the westernmost known continent of Azeroth. However, before the Sundering, Kalimdor was used to refer to the all-in-one main continent before the Sundering. In WoW's lore, Kalimdor means land of eternal starlight in both languages of the Titan and Darnassian. How and why Titans and our Titan Watchers decided to name the original continent Kalimdor is still not known. In the real world, Kalim means passage in Albanian, but this is probably more of a coincidence in the entomology for the name. The next name in our video is Lordaeron. The name Lordaeron has held several different meanings over the years in WoW, and we'll do our best to explain them all. First, however, is the in-game entomology for the name. Lordaeron is named after the renowned human general named Lordaeron. Lordaeron was one of the first warriors in the game's lore and served as a trusted general to the first human king, Thoradin, and Thoradin considered him a brother. Thoradin founded the kingdom of Arthor and built the city of Strom. Another trusted general of King Thorin was Igneus Trollbane, who was the ancestor of Danath Trollbane. The last known descendant of Lordaeron was Anduin Lothar. King Thoradin can be seen in the Legion Arms Warrior campaign to obtain the artifact Stromkar, which was Thoradin's weapon. General Lordain sacrificed himself in the Troll Wars. To honor him, many soldiers named their homeland Lordaeron after him. The name was later cemented when nobles from Strom fled north during the fracturing of Arathar and founded the city of Lordaeron. In the game currently, Lordaeron can refer to the ruined city, the land surrounding the city, Lordaeron Lake, and the Kingdom of Lordaeron, which spreads across most of the north and eastern kingdoms, including Tirisfall, the modern name Plaguelands, and Silverpine. The Kingdom of Lordaeron survived the first two wars, only to fall to Arthas and the Scourge in the Warcraft III Reign of Chaos. 
This is just a brief account of this part of WoW's lore. And needless to say, there's much more to the story and the lore here to discover that we don't have time to talk about in this video. Next we move on to the name of the character, Sylvanas. The name Sylvanas appears to be unique in Warcraft lore. Sylvanas is not named after any historical figures in our real world, however Sylvanas means something close to forest in Latin. Sylvanas is also the name of a Roman god, and we'll talk more about him in a bit. The name Sylvanas fits very thematically with the former Ranger General, Silvermoon. The Ranger Generals are at home in the forest and are very familiar with the land. Sylvanas' master of the woods and guerrilla tactics allowed her to make quick work of her enemies. Through this manner, Sylvanas was able to inflict large losses upon the Scourge when Arthas invaded Quel'Thas in the Third War. This is a large reason as to why Arthas hated her so much and turned her into a banshee out of spite. The Roman god Sylvanas was the god of forests and boundaries. His name from Latin literally translates as of the woods. In addition to the forest imagery, the boundary aspect of the god Sylvanas is also quite symbolic because Sylvanas quite literally helped defend the boundaries of Quel'Thalas. The magical rune stones at the borders of Quel'Thalas also suggested another connection here, since Sylvanas the god was also the god of field stones and markers. This was also proven again when Sylvanas broke the boundary between Azeroth and the Shadowlands. Regardless of Sylvanas' recent character development and recent expansions, the notion of quite literally not being able to see the forest or the trees does fit quite nicely with the several themes of Sylvanas as a character. Our final word from this video is Torrent. A lot of fantasy words in WoW come from Latin, and using Latin to build words is somewhat of a cliché in fantasy. The name Torrent is no exception to this fantasy Latin language rule, as Tauras is Latin for bull. Despite such a simple etymology for a name, the Torrin have an extremely rich and unique lore and culture within the game. Physically, the Torrin themselves are based on the Minotaur of ancient Greek mythology, but have a culture more similar to that of the various tribes of Native Americans. One of WoW's many strengths is that it has the ability to incorporate many different source materials, yet weave them into a very familiar fantasy story. Some people also like to point out that Torrin is an anagram of nature, meaning you can rearrange the letters and get both words. Whether or not this was intended since early in WoW's development remains unknown, but Torin do seem to have a deeper connection to shamanism and druidism than many of the other races on Azeroth. Alright, and that's it for this video. We've decided to limit it down to 10 words due to time constraints. This video script was very experimental and sort of a lore video and an unknown side of video, so let us know if you like this video and want to see more like it. Do you have any names you want us to explore in WoW? If so, leave it down in a comment and maybe we'll include it in the next video if we make another one like this.